My name is Nicholas Rowley. I'm a partner in the law firm Carpenter, Zuckerman, and Rowley, and I specialize in jury trials. I grew up reading Jerry Spence's books and anything that he'd put out. So I, I got to know Jerry Spence before I ever went to college. I, I wasn't going to be able to go to college because I didn't have the money or the grades, and so I went into the military. And I you know, followed him and knew that I wanted to be a lawyer someday, but I never thought I'd be able to. I joined the military on my 17th birthday as a medic. And then I went to college through the military. So I got my bachelor's degree by the time I was 19. I started out and I got certified as a law clerk, as a certified law student, which allowed me to do work in courtrooms, to do depositions, and to participate in trials. And it got to the point I was doing medical malpractice cases. And since I had been a medic and seen quite a bit as a medic, I knew medicine. So I was able to go in and go toe to toe with these medical experts and the different medical defendants that were in cases and I started winning cases as a law student and actually was involved with trying my first cases as a law student dating back to 1999. So I came out of law school and hit the ground running. I'd go knock on doors, say my name's Nick Rowley and I try cases. I'm willing to try anything, anywhere, against anybody as long as it's a fight worth fighting, and I'll do it. I don't care, give me your loser cases, I'll try them. And I started getting cases, and I started getting trials, and I started getting verdicts. I remember, you know, getting a $15,000 verdict was huge. Getting a 50,000, getting a $100,000 verdict, oh my lord, and then after a few years of practice, I got my first seven-figure verdict. And it was, I, I, never, I, thought, I never thought I'd win a million dollar case. And then I started to believe and then more and more started coming. People want to know how can they do the same thing. It's not easy because we have to take off all of our armor and take the things away that, that we have that protect us because if we care about somebody we make ourselves vulnerable to, to the pain of, of losing and that exists with every case. So we got to do that and then really get to know and accept the human being that we're there to represent. We have to do it because we're going to ask a jury to do it. And the way to do it is really time and listening, looking through photo albums, sharing a meal, cooking a meal for that person, getting to know their family, finding out what's important to them. We have to look at every case as an individual, a human being, a story, what's happened, and we need to treat it that way from the very beginning. Because everybody has a human story, if you're willing to listen. Mitch isn't the only one in history to warn this. Let's start with the chicken suit. He goes, here's this crazy lawyer who puts on a chicken suit in closing argument. There's more to it. Property, Mitch Carter testified, I'm not Mitch Carter anymore. I'm the boy in the chicken suit. And he broke down when he said that on the stand. So I felt, putting it on, now, now, now you're not the only one. Mitch Carter put this on. Why would he do it? Why would he do such a humiliating thing? Is it because this is fun? Is it because, yeah, wanted attention? What's the evidence showing? The jury didn't understand what it was until I put that suit on, nor did I, what it was to be in that suit, how thin it was, that there wasn't any padding, how you can barely even see, how humiliating it is to wear that thing. And I didn't know whether I was going to do it or not. Why am I doing this? Why am I putting it on? Why am I going to wear this thing? What's the real reason? What impact is it going to have on those jurors? Is it going to be something that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a ployer, that's a, you know, some over-dramatization? Or is it something that's going to be real and help the jurors connect with the case? After the closing argument, Mitch said, that was the most important thing. The most important thing during this whole trial is you putting that on. 
thank you. Whether we win or lose, you putting that on, you wearing it in public, so that means the world to me. Let's go to, you know, holding a baby, holding little Sophia in front of that jury. I didn't plan it, but I'm sitting there and she's there in the room during the closing argument and I, I looked at her and how big she was getting. And I, in the moment, I felt it was the right thing to do. I picked her up in my arms and I brought her in front of the jury and I told the judge, I said, look at how heavy she is. Her parents have to carry her for the rest of her life. She'll never be able to eat. She'll never be able to speak. She'll never be able to walk. And they're going to have to carry her for the rest of her life. I'm, I'm holding her right now. But I've got to pass her over to you. They need help. And that's why you're here. It wasn't something that I thought of in advance and I didn't feel it was a risk. I felt it was right in the moment. And if you get in touch with your jurors and you get in touch with your client and, and you trust what's going on, then stuff like that's going to come to you. You're going to be creative. Be willing to fail. Sometimes I'm not in tune and sometimes I, I try and sometimes I go too far with a witness or I let my emotions or anger get the best of me or I haven't spent the right amount of time with a client. So I, I'm not perfect. When I don't succeed for my client, I feel horrible. It's like death. It's the worst feeling imaginable. But what's going to make you good is making sure you pick yourself back up again and pick up the next case, pick up the next file and find the human story and get to know them so it's not just a piece of paper or a whole bunch of them. Just get on to the next one. The little cases are the toughest ones. And if we're a big successful lawyer that can go out and get million dollar verdicts, then we should take one every once in a while that's not so big. We should take a case with another lawyer who hasn't had the experience and help, you know, don't just get in there and do it and show them how it's done. Help them do it. Work on the small cases every once in a while because that's what got us all to where we are. And I, I make a point to do that and I don't do it just every once in a while. I do a lot of that work and I care about those cases and I'm just as passionate about them. Don't drink alcohol when you are in trial or smoke marijuana. Keep your brain clear. When you're in trial, exercise. Exercise, if you're a person that exercises regularly, exercise a bit more. Don't eat unhealthy. Don't be mean. Don't be mean. And I know it's really tough. Don't be too cocky. That can get the best of you. One of the things that I haven't done so good of a job at is when it comes to dealing with difficult judges. Sometimes we get those judges that aren't that great. Maybe that's not their fault. Maybe that they were taught that way. Or maybe it's something about us or me or my case that, that isn't right. But the way I've dealt with conflict with judges in the past isn't, isn't good. I've fought with them, decided, you know, I'm going to lock horns with this judge. I'm going to outsmart him. I know the law better. Or I can, that's fine. This judge doesn't like our case or doesn't like me. I'm trying my case to the jury. You should always try your case to the judge. So even the judges that may not seem so great, what's going on inside of them? Be kind to them and no matter what, always respect them. And feel that inside. Because when you dis, when I've disrespected or I just feel disrespect or contempt, even though I may not express it, just feeling it and, and having that inside of me is poisonous and it starts to emote. So what I try to do now is if a judge is against me, I try to love them as much as I can. It's really important to have a balance and to always work at having a balance between your family and being a trial lawyer. 
Something that Jerry Spence taught me early on is he said I wasn't a good father, I wasn't a good husband, I didn't spend enough time. So I took that and said, well, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to spend time. So I make sure that I do things to, to set time aside that's 100% family time. We have what we call digital detox. It's like in our, fa in our family and all the kids have to do digital detox. You turn off all your phones, all your devices, and we do stuff together. Jury trials are, are going to consume me as a person if I want to be a really good trialer that's going to take away. So I make being, being a trialer part of who I am as a husband, who I am as a father, and I, I involve my family. I don't spend nights away from my wife. Not a single night. And, and that's not how I did things before when I started out, you know, but I'm remarried and I, I'm doing things different. I learned a lesson. Being a trial lawyer is what I was put on this earth to do. What I know is that I can make big change, big change that spreads, 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 one case at a time, that changes lives. There's nothing like it. To, to give someone their, their, their life back, to give them justice, to, to give them the care that they need, or, or just to, even if they don't really get paid, to give them a voice and to let them know that, you know, we care about you and that the, the, the world out there, there are people that care, that'll stand up for you, that believe in something, you know, believe in the greater good. And if you, if you feel that way, and it, it, you know, it burns inside of you, you take care of people, you care about those jurors, it all comes together, and I, I can't think of doing anything else in this world professionally. We see people, um, usually at their worst, the point in their life where um, it can't get any worse. And um, in situations where life will probably never really get better. Um, what I've had to learn to do is not internalize everything that we do. And as best I can, not take home every case.